listen to a message from me. This is 100% for giving ministries exalting truth, no matter the cost. I sincerely hope that you're having a blessed day. I hope that your day's going well. If you've run into any trials and tribulations today, know that you're not the only one. As Christians and even people who aren't Christians, we all go through life. We go through it together. And some of us are at good points in our life and others are at bad points. Regardless, at the end of the day, whether you're a believer or not, Jesus remains here for you. The good news that the world has is that Jesus is for us and he's not against us. I hope that you're having a blessed day. If not, you're on my heart, you're in my mind, and I just I want to encourage you with a message from God's Word this morning. In my personal studies right now, I am in Romans chapter 3. I'm also reading in the Old Testament as well. But today, it's Romans chapter 3. And what Paul does, the Apostle Paul, he opens up and says, Are Jews better than non-Jewish people? The, The term he uses is Gentiles. And his point here, talking to his Jewish audience, is no, we are not better than non Jewish people. You know anything about Jewish people, about the Israelites? They are God's chosen people, and God has used them throughout history. And there will come a time where Jews will eventually come to Jesus. There is a remnant, not to get into that. But Romans chapter 3 opens up asking the question, What advantage then has the Jew, or what profit of circumcision? Much in every way, chiefly because of them, were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God were given to the Jewish people. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let let God be true, but every man a liar. Anyway, you may be thinking, what's that even mean? There's a context here, and the point of this episode is to not go into the not go into the nitty-gritty details of Romans chapter 3. Rather, just tell you what the Apostle Paul's point is. You know, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that my life is being founded upon the Word of God. And I hope that's the case for you. Back in Matthew chapter 4, when Satan tempted Jesus, what did what did Jesus do in front of Satan? Jesus told Satan that man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what man lives on. Yes, physical food is important. But our spiritual food is important as well. What we build our life upon, the decisions that I make, the decisions that you make, it's so important. No, we're not perfect. But yet, that matter still matters. The question, how is a person made right with God? Now, there are different churches who believe different things. There are different churches who have different ideas of this subject matter. And what my goal is in this life is to understand what God's Word said, what what God has done for you and me, and to understand that in its fullness, in its fullness. Um, So how we understand the Word of God is important, but how we understand how we're saved and how we're kept saved, that's just as important. Um, Yes, our physical food is important, but our spiritual food and our understanding of how a person is saved is just as important. Anyway, Romans chapter 3, Paul says in verse 9, are we better than they? He says to the Jews, are we better than non-Jewish people? Not at all. For we have previously charged both Jews and Greeks that they are all under sin. Fact of the matter is, we've all screwed up. We have all messed up somewhere in this life that has disqualified us from entering into the gates of heaven, to entering into God's kingdom through our good works, in any shape or form. Now, why do I say that? Let's continue to read in verse 19 of chapter 3. Paul says, Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. 
Therefore, verse 20, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. That's God's sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So this is really important here. Let's stop here and dissect this before we go any further. The Apostle Paul is crystal clear. No one by the deeds of the law will be justified at all, period. Because why? The law, the only purpose of the law is to bring us to the knowledge of our sin. When God gives us the commandments, when God gave the Israelites the commandments to love your neighbor, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't murder, the whole nine yards, or I could say the whole ten yards. When he gave those to us, he was not giving them to us for us to rely on on our obedience of keeping that law in order to get us right with God. Because if that's the case, we've got it all wrong. James chapter 2, verse 10, James says, If we fail in one area of the law, we fail the whole thing. The point here is that people cannot get right with God by keeping His commandments. Contrary to what you may have heard in church on Sunday, or maybe you've heard this in the past, You cannot get right with God by keeping commandments. Period. In any way, shape, or form, your obedience, your command keeping, your ability to do that is not in any way mixed with your justification before God. Make that crystal clear. Why is that? Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The point here is that when we sin the first time, the fact that all of us have sins in our life, that disqualifies us. There's no more hope for us in that matter of getting right with God, in that pathway of getting right with God by doing good deeds or trying to be perfect or trying to be, you know, 100% good, 90% good, whatever. That pathway is no use to us. There's no hope in that. Paul continues, even, excuse me, he says, being being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Verse 21, actually back up, yeah, verse 21. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, hear that, the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed. There is something apart from the law that is God's righteousness, and that's what we need to be looking towards. We're not to be looking towards. To the law for righteousness because it doesn't provide us that. It doesn't bring us righteousness. Paul continues, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all on who believe. For there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So there is a righteousness of God that is completely apart from the Mosaic law. Many people think that they're going to get into heaven because they're good people. The truth is, in terms of getting right with God, in terms of going to heaven, they are not good people. Why? Because they have sin in their life. That applies to me, that applies to you, that applies to everybody. There's a righteousness of God that is separate from the law. The law does us no good in getting us right with God. The law does us no good in keeping us saved before God, even after we become a Christian. The point here is that the righteousness of God is found in Jesus Christ alone. And all we can do is rely on Him, literally, by paying the penalty of their sin through His death, of our sins. Jesus can free people from our sins and transfer His righteousness to everyone who believes. We have to understand this. We can't do anything. We cannot contribute anything to our justification before God. In verse 24, Romans chapter 3 says, Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. One thing about being justified before God is it's free. We don't have to pay for it. No, this is not cheap grace, as many people would say, because it wasn't cheap for Jesus. Yeah, you better believe it's cheap for us, and you better hope that that's the case, because if it's not, we have nothing to pay God. We have we don't have enough money. We don't have enough good works to pay God back for our sinful condition. 
But thankfully, we don't have to worry about that. Why? Because Romans 4 comes up later on, something we will read more extensively in the future. But being justified freely by His grace, it is a free gift. Eternal life is free to everyone who places their faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, obedience to God is vital and important, and through it comes blessings. Disobedience is vital to understand. It's important to understand. And by disobeying, consequences will come from that. Period. Water baptism, submitting to that, is vital. That's important. Any command from God for us to do is important. It's vital for us to obey and not put off. But if we, we are relying on any of these things, anything that we do to have any contribution to our salvation, there is no hope for us. Because it's all of Jesus from start to finish. It is in my conviction that there is a difference between being a child of God and a disciple of God. There are those two distinctions that the scriptures lay out that I see. Romans chapter 4. And I am well aware of James chapter 2. Something we'll talk about as well. And there's three different views of that scripture. That says faith and works go together. But the context means everything. I'll throw that out there. Romans chapter 4, concerning Abraham. How was he justified, Paul says? Abraham was Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Period. Works were not in the picture. Before God, Abraham was justified by faith alone. And he goes on, Romans 4, 4. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted in his grace, but as a debt. But to, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. No works in the picture when it comes to justification at all. All Abraham did was trusted in God, trusted in the Lord, and he was saved. Period. That's how he became righteous. Faith alone and Christ alone. That is Paul's point here. There were no works in the picture at all. No water baptism, no, no prayer service, no attendance for a church service, whatever. Abraham was justified by faith alone. That is how we are justified today. And it's important to understand that. Completely important to understand that. I hope that makes sense to you. In order to be saved by grace, there cannot be works in the picture. Romans 11, verse 6, and Ephesians chapter 2. More than once, Paul says to the Ephesian church, you have been saved by grace. He says that twice. And then he goes into verse 8. says it. For we have been saved by grace through faith. This is not of yourselves, it's a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Period. Works and grace cannot mix together. However, works should follow after we are saved. We are to obey God after we are saved. Because we are Jesus' workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. So, if you see someone in need today, legitimately in need, help them and give the glory to God. But don't bank your salvation upon your obedience to that good work that you do or lack thereof even if you don't rely on jesus alone but know that god will hold us accountable for every single decision we make or lack thereof i hope that this is important to you i hope that this is a blessing to you you are saved by grace through faith alone in christ alone period the righteousness of god is jesus christ and it's found apart from the law all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god and we will continue to mess up throughout our life. I hope that that is encouraging to you, uh, those facts. Not that we're going to fall short. I hate that fact. But that is just the case. We must rely on a holy God each and every day. We must rely on his grace. If you fall in today, pick yourself back up by God's grace. Don't let Satan get in your mind and make you believe that you've done messed it all up. You can't turn around. You can't turn back to the Lord. Turn back to the Lord right now. Pick yourself up by His grace, realizing you don't deserve it. You'll never deserve it. None of us deserve it, and we'll never deserve it. That's why Jesus is so good to us. Eternal life is free. And if you haven't received that by placing your faith in Jesus Christ today, I hope that you will, and I hope that you have a blessed day. Until next time, God bless. Mm-hmm.